So, John, if you could go back in time and have a conversation with your younger self, what would it be about? Uh, are we saying like 10 years ago? Yeah, sure. I would say, hey, you know that weird little hippie kid who's watching Family Go on your sofa right now? <laughs> <laughs> One day, you two are going to have a hit podcast together. So get him started early, get him watching some classic films, because he's going to be ignorant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks. Some films are fine, just the way they are. Beyond the Box Set, a podcast where we pitch prequels, sequels, and spin-offs to films that don't have any. I'm Harry, joining me as always is John. Hello. And this week, just one by ourselves this week. We are guest-free, isn't it delicious? Oh, it's great. It's joyous. <laughs> Not that we don't appreciate all of our guests, thank you all for <laughs> coming on and taking the time. Yeah, I was going to say. But it is nice occasionally to just have a bit of, you know, a bit of alone time. Yeah. Yeah. So, just normal episode this week, mm-hmm. doing the film Looper. Yes, this was your choice, so tell me why you chose Looper. Thought it'd be great fun. Love a good bit of time travel. Mm-hmm. And this one this one brings a good bit of time travel and it's confusing. It is, yeah. Although not too confusing. I no, no. It, like it, it sets some rules of time travel and maybe it sticks to them, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But it's not all about that, though. No, I, I had some questions. I had some questions. But on the whole, I, I could follow what the film was trying to sell me. Of course. Which I appreciate it. But this is my first time watching it. I really liked it. I'm guessing you've seen it before. Mm-hmm. So when did you first see it? Oh, I don't remember. Ten years ago, maybe? It came out in 2012, so you did not see it ten years ago. Unless you, in fact, have perfected time travel. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I, I, I saw it a good while back. I don't really remember. And there was a lot of it that I'd forgotten. But also a lot of it that I remembered. Mm-hmm. A lot of the jokes I think I'd remembered. There's not many. And, sure. and they're, they're quite slight, but they, they all hit perfectly. Tell me a joke that you found funny in this film. That bit where Just Gordon Levitt is saying to uh, Jeff Daniels... I am learning French because I'm going to go to Paris. Mm-hmm. Jeff Dunn is like, go to China. And he's like, no, I want to go to Paris. I want to go, I want to, go to France. Like, I'm from the future. Go to China. <laughs> I really like that. I didn't really think of that as much as a joke. but Not necessarily I mean, a joke, but just like it's... It was an, yeah, it was an, and probably true, but it was interesting. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I really enjoyed this a lot. I did. I'd never seen this before. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought it was really entertaining. It, it did a good job. Uh, what were your thoughts on the makeup? Oh, okay. We started that, yeah, because we <laughs> Let's just start with that, shall we? Let's get that yeah, I have down in my notes at some point. We need to talk about Joseph Gordon-Levitt's eyebrows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he looked like he was in Twilight. <laughs> he had something something weird going on with him. I mean, obviously, he's made up to look like Bruce Willis. He is and weirdly Bruce Willis is not made up to look like Joseph Gordon-Levitt. No. I reckon there was something. Just like in the negotiations for the film, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's just like, oh yeah, that sounds great, I'll do that. Like, ah, I could do with a gig like that. And Bruce Willis just like, sorry, you want me to wear makeup so I look like... I'm not doing that. Yeah. And then I'm just like, oh God, we need you anyway. Yeah, well, Bruce Willis is famously a mardy old bastard. So I can yeah. imagine that's the case, exactly. I mean, it would have been much easier for them to meet in the middle somewhere, rather than just Joseph Gordon-Levitt being really uncanny valley looking mm-hmm. and... Bruce Willis just being Bruce Willis. Because, yeah, the nose contouring, I thought, was fairly effective. It did make his face mm. look more shaped like Bruce Willis. Fine. Yeah, it did. But the eyebrows. The, the, like, the, the, Bruce Willis eyebrows. doesn't have those eyebrows. No. And if you look back at, like, young Bruce Willis, he still doesn't have those <laughs> eyebrows. Like, why did they give him these, like, Edward Cullen eyebrows? I don't understand. I'm not sure. It was very entertaining, but it was so distracting. I would say it's iconic. I guess it is, yeah, it is iconic. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's will be, it'll be my, my primary memory of this film will be holy shit, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's eyebrows are insane. Did you appreciate the amount of times they... Well, some of the subtleties they had of referencing Joseph Gordon-Levitt's, albeit possibly fake, receding hairline. Just like initially when you see him like getting ready for the day or something mm-hmm. and he's just looking in the mirror and just looking at that, that, that <laughs> corner bit of his head. It's like, what's going on here? <laughs> I did think that the there's a scene, obviously, because, I mean, quick plot summary up top. So this film stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis. It's set in 2040, the year 2040? 2045 or something 2045, like that, yeah. yeah. So 30 years in the future, essentially. So at the beginning of the film, in voiceover, which we'll get to, Joseph Gordon-Levitt explains that in the even further future, in 2070, time mm-hmm. travel has been invented. Mm-hmm. But it's also been immediately outlawed. And it's now being used by criminals to bump off people? Yeah, essentially send people back in time so that people called loopers 
so Joseph Gordon-Levitt can kill them then dispose of the body in a time when nobody is looking for that dead body because yeah. it's it's not they're not necessarily born yet and in the future that body is nowhere to be found so nobody knows that it's actually been bumped off yeah and one of the snags of this is that everyone who signs up to be one of these loopers these time assassins has to end their contract by killing themselves Mm -hmm. i.e. there's themselves 30 years in the future will be sent back Mm -hmm. you get like a 30-year contract so at some point you will you're just killing a bunch of random people you never met who will appear out of nowhere with a bag over the head and one day that person will be you from 30 years in the future Mm -hmm. and when you've killed yourself you've closed your loop and then you get paid off and you've got 30 years of living in complete luxury freedom etc but knowing that at the end of that you will be killed Mm-hmm. Bruce Willis plays older Joseph Gordon-Levitt who comes back in time to be killed and surprise surprise does not die and does a runner and then the film basically involves young Joe they're called Joe aren't they yeah. Joseph Gordon-Levitt chasing his older self to try and kill him so that he can close his loop and finish his contract otherwise he himself his life is forfeit because mm-hmm. if you don't kill yourself then the, the gang the cartel will kill you as we yeah. found out when Paul Dano's character early on let his loop run. Get let his loop run, which is what it's called, yeah. But yeah, there's a scene early on in the film where, well, about midway through actually, where we see Joseph Gordon-Levitt age into Bruce Willis in like a montage. Mm -hmm. It's like one year, five years, ten years. And it's basically, he goes through like, oh, it can look the same, can look the same, can look the same. Whoa, that was a rough ten years. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Just like, oh God, did did, did you pull out your hair? And just not cut the rest of it. (laughs) Like, everything changes so fast. Again, I think this is because Bruce Willis obviously wasn't willing to do a lot of makeup work, so it was all moving forward. So it's like, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, Joseph Gordon-Levitt, bang, Bruce Willis. Mm. And they don't look the same. And it just looks... Like, there's one scene where Bruce Willis is wearing a hilarious wig. Mm -hmm. A really... He looks looks like Voldemort. (laughs) It's that kind of wig. Uh, And then after that, he's just Bruce Willis. You know, Voldemort is famously bald, right? Yeah, well, he's bald, but he's... What's... Oh, not bald, not... Not not Voldemort. Not Voldemort, no. Oh, you know who it is? It's that character from Lord of the Rings. Who, Another guy. Yeah, you know, Saruman's assistant, his little Weasley f- assistant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He looks like him. Yeah, mixed with the child catcher. Yes, it's it's a, it's a weird That's look. It. But yeah, it's a very harsh jump from like, and it's in like a 10 year difference. It's like mm. 10 years in the future, 25 years in the future. Mm. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was kind of a source of some unintentional comedy for me. The, mm-hmm. the progression from Joseph Gordon-Levitt to Bruce Willis. Yeah. But I mean, I could get past it. It, it, was, it was funny and campy and silly and yeah. But... That led me to a question, is this the last decent Bruce Willis film? Uh, I mean, what's he done since this? The, the Expendables? I was going to say, The Expendables. Red? Uh, Red 2? Oh, God, Red 2 was awful. Maybe there's been a Die Hard since this, I'm not sure. Was but, it a good uh, Die Hard, though? No. Well, there you go, I'm just saying, well, the last great Bruce Willis film might be this, yeah. Potentially, yeah. And he might have more in him, but, you know, mm. he's not exactly been churning out the hits recently. No, he's not. Time travel has not yet been invented, but 30 years from now, it will have been. It will be instantly outlawed, used only in secret by the largest criminal organizations. It's nearly impossible to dispose of a body in the future. I'm told, tagging techniques, whatnot. So when these criminal organizations in the future need someone gone, they use specialized assassins in our present called loopers. And so, my employers in the future nab the target. They zap him back to me, their looper. He appears hands tied and head sacked. And I do the necessaries, collect my silver. So the target has vanished from the future. And I've just disposed of a body that technically does not exist. Clean. I'll tell you what I appreciated about this, actually, is that it didn't get too bogged down in detail. Mm -hmm. This is directed by Ryan Johnson, Mm -hmm. who his only film since this has been The Last Jedi, which obviously came out last year. Mm -hmm. And I know The Last Jedi divides opinion. I really liked it. You liked it too at the time. Star Wars film. Yeah, always, also... always divide opinion. Yeah, but I really liked it. It did have some problems, but I don't think it was a perfect film. It was good. But so I spent a lot of time watching this thinking, oh, so this guy did Star Wars. I spent a lot of time trying to spot traits that also appeared in Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And there weren't loads because they're very different films. Like, this is kind of a noir kind of film, whereas mm-hmm. Star Wars is, is Star Wars. But one of them was definitely lots of ideas, not so big on the detail. Yeah. Which is a good and a bad thing. Like, I don't mind that necessarily. But it does employ a voiceover early on and kind of just explains we're in the future time travel exists it does this this is how it works 
and then boom, action in. It doesn't spend a lot of time setting up the world too much, which I appreciate it because there could easily be a version of this film that's like three hours long and really boring, whereas this film clocks in just under two and it's quite, it's good pace. There's, mm. there's no really boring bits. Yeah, I agree. So I enjoyed that a lot. I like the fact that it just kind of set up its, its stakes pretty quickly and followed them through. Mm-hmm. Now, what did you think of, uh, we're really jumping around here, but what did you think of the earlier point with uh, with Paul Dano and the way they capture old Paul Dano? Oh, that was really good. I thought that was great. I mm-hmm. thought that was really visually interesting and spooky. And yeah, and, and it was, so basically what happens, and it's used throughout the film, is that, so Paul Dano plays another of the loopers who lets his own older self, he's confronted by his own older self and lets him get away which is punishable by death, basically. Mm-hmm. And so he does a runner. His old self is also the runner. He does a runner. And then he get the younger version of himself gets caught because Joseph Gordon-Levitt sells him out. Mm-hmm. So he gets caught, his younger version. And then we see the older version of himself running away. And then we see burnt into his arm. He appears like some scars from 30 years ago saying, be at this address in 15 minutes. Yeah. And then parts of his body just start disappearing. Like his nose is cut off. One of his feet go. So basically what's happening is that his younger self is being mutilated mutilated basically yeah, yeah. and so obviously it's showing up on the older self because obviously anything you happen you, you do to him affects the future one as well mm-hmm. so that i thought that was really cool and quite chilling uh and they use that again uh, it's used again with bruce willis and joseph gordon levitt they use it to kind of communicate with each other at mm-hmm. certain points uh, so i like that i thought that was good gross but good yeah. <laughs> it was a good weird use of time travel because it makes no sense yeah yeah, yeah. but also it, it, it was just kind of cool to yeah. look at. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I did have a lot like, of questions about causality. Yeah, so you cut somebody's foot off and that happens instantly to the guy who's time travel, but not in his past. Yeah, so he's gone so like he, he can be driving a car and then suddenly he can't reach the brake pedal. Yeah. Which is weird because it it just feels completely wrong as time travel would work. Yeah. If you think about it, it makes absolutely zero sense. Yeah. Because... <laughs> Which I think was summed up really, really well when there's the diner scene. Where oh, Where yes. Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis finally meet up and they sit down in the diner, order the same meal without knowing it. Mm-hmm. And they start just having a conversation and Joe Gordon-Levitt's just like, so what's up with all this time travel shit? And Bruce Willis is just like, don't talk about it because if we talk about it then we're just two guys in a diner talking about time travel <laughs> yeah. and i was like oh that's so good that's such a great way to just ignore the whole sort of yeah. how does this work the film almost like broke the fourth wall it was like don't think about it yeah. it doesn't matter <laughs> Bruce actually said, it doesn't matter like yeah. just enjoy that you could always sense the director going just enjoy the film i can't make this make sense but just enjoy it yeah and i was 100 percent okay with that until the end until and then the, the end on the very end i was like oh this doesn't make any sense at all right. i mean it didn't ruin it but so, okay, spoiler alerts for the end here. So the film ends where one thing that's happening is that Bruce Willis's older version of the character is being killed because there is a telekinetic crime mob boss 30 years in the future, mm-hmm. this character, who is killing off all of the loopers and also has killed his wife, Bruce Willis's wife in the future. Yeah. And so Bruce Willis has to go back and kill him as a child to prevent him from killing his wife in the future. Mm-hmm. That's his stakes. And the child, it turns out, is... The child is the son of Emily Blunt's character. Mm-hmm. We'll get to her. Uh, so there's a scene where he's chasing down this child and he threatens to kill Emily Blunt. And then to stop it all, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's character shoots himself, like his young version of himself, yeah. kills himself, causing Bruce Willis to disappear. Mm-hmm. So he di- Joseph Gordon-Levitt dies. Bruce Willis, obviously now having not existed after that point, disappears, mm-hmm. leaving Emily Blunt and her son. Yeah. But everything that's happened has still happened. <laughs> And that wouldn't have happened because he would never have come back. And it just, it made my head explode. Well, it, it's fitting the same rules that it's already established before. So like if you injure your younger self when your older self is there. Your yeah, exactly. Only, it's the same will, principle will, will, as Paul Dano. only yeah. get that injury now, even yeah. with 30 years of scarring. Yeah. So it, it made sense with the rules that it set. Yeah. But the rules that it set were wrong. But it had to be that way for the plot to work. Sure. I, I, it didn't ruin the film. It just left me with a lot of questions. Mm-hmm. Also, another question I had was this film relied quite heavily on voiceover at the start and the end. Mm-hmm. So at the start, Joseph Gordon-Levitt kind of explains the plot in voiceover. And at the end, when he makes a decision, he explains it to the audience. It's like, and then I realized it was just a constant loop. So I decided to break the loop. Mm-hmm. And then he shoots himself mm-hmm. and he dies. Yeah. So then I was like, where did that voiceover come from then? Where is he? Is he in heaven? <laughs> it, was, it, was weird because it did only come from the start and the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, where is he speaking to us from? Like, just like his current thoughts? Maybe it was past tense. It's true, it's yeah. true. It was obviously because otherwise the audience would have been like, why are you doing that? But mm. yeah. I mean, this is a film where you just have to let that stuff go. Because if you let that go, it's very entertaining. But yeah. yeah. It didn't ruin it for me. It just, I had some questions, which I don't Would think... you have liked it if 
like at the end or maybe it's a post credit scene they pull out and he's there in heaven yes yes exactly because <laughs> he floats up to heaven and then they he's there with everybody else Jeff Daniels is there yeah. and that, that other guy who kept shooting himself in the foot they're all there oh, and yeah, it's like, yeah. oh what a time then I saw it I saw a mom who would die for her son a man who would kill for his wife boy, angry and alone, laid out in front of him the bad path, I saw it, and the path was a circle, round and round. So I changed it. One thing I noticed is that Bruce Willis isn't actually in this very much. He's not, is he? No. I... It's weird how they, they pitched it as sort of like... It's just going and Bruce Willis. They're sort of both starring in this film equally, playing the same character equally, and it's completely equal. And Bruce Willis is in it for five minutes. Uh-huh. It's weird. Yeah. Again, I think the film works as, as it is, but I think it would have been nice to have more of them kind of interacting. Because mm, yeah. I think mean, that's an interesting kind of you're meeting your older self. They only really have that one scene in the diner where they communicate. Otherwise, they don't really talk to each other very much. Mm-hmm. I did enjoy the fact that Bruce Willis did get one scene where he gets to be full Bruce Willis oh yeah that was good that was entertaining yeah. <laughs> when he goes full like John McClane mm. like wipes out an entire room of soldiers single handedly yeah so. but stealing their guns as well yeah so. he, he was yeah he, he had some fun he, he was good caster even though he didn't do loads he was good casting because he is like probably the ultimate action star who's not like you've got people like Schwarzenegger and Stallone and Van Damme but they would have been a bit too silly mm. like, and then also how do you find the person who's the young who's version the young version of them because they've yeah. got to do accents yeah exactly so <laughs> Bruce Willis is like the credible action star so mm. it made sense and I enjoyed that scene a lot it's like, oh yes he's being Bruce Yeah, he's Bruce out the scene but uh, yeah that was pretty much all he got to do take this truck you take your gold and go live your life nobody's coming after you I fixed it you go kill the boy, that how you fix it? You're goddamn right I'm gonna kill that boy! Some supporting characters in this film. Mm-hmm. Jeff Daniels, what was the point of him? I was kind of expecting that the guy who kept shooting himself in the foot... Would be him. Would be Yeah, Jeff I had the exact yeah. same thought, yeah. yeah. But then they didn't go that route. And I was no. like, why not? Just do that. That, that would have been great. Because it felt like they had... Because, a... like, Jeff Daniels just constantly being horrible to him. Yeah. Would have really added something else. Yeah, it felt like they were building up that relationship because he's the only character. So there's a, a character who's one of the other assassins who has shot himself in the foot in the past. He's kind of mm-hmm. almost the comic relief, but not quite. Mm-hmm. And him and Jeff Daniels are constantly like, well, Jeff Daniels is constantly belittling him. Mm-hmm. And Jeff Daniels has come back from the future, we understand. Mm-hmm. So he's 30 years in the future. There's even a scene where he like bashes that guy's hand in. Yeah. And then I thought, oh, so is he going to then look at his own hand and be like, ouch, but yeah. nothing. There's just not, it was weird. And then Jeff Daniels kind of just dies. It's like, oh, that all you were bringing? Like, he never really paid off as a character. It really would have been great if that was yeah. if that was the situation. But yeah, absolutely. Nope, it was... Disappointing, disappointing. Missed opportunity. Yeah. Well, you found him. Tracking Seth's bike. That was clever. And you rustled up a posse and went out to get him. I could do it again. You can fuck up again? Really? I got too much riding, kid. I can't afford to fuck up playing cowboy. Put your gat on the table. So then the other, obviously we haven't talked yet about Emily Blunt. Mm-hmm. Who was good. Yeah, she was. She was very good. I had a few problems with her arc. Mm-hmm. Her, sure. I said, not, her, her performance was great. She was very good. She's very good in these kind of films. She does a lot of action films. And she's generally very good in them. I didn't think it was strictly necessary for her to have sex with Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Not necessary. It kind of came out of nowhere. Yeah. It was like yeah. it happened and then it didn't really pay off. I mean, it was supposed to like build a connection with them, but they already had a connection. I don't, I don't know. So she has a son mm-hmm. who has telekinetic powers, which 10% of the population in the future have telekinetic powers, but mm-hmm. not particularly good ones. And Except- the main bulk of the film just ignores. Yeah, it, it just really sort of, does. It just yeah. sort of says slightly at the start that people can sort of lift pennies with their hand or yeah. whatever. And then uh, they don't touch on that until pretty much the last third of the film yeah. if that and then they reveal that the son has the little kid who's like eight years old has super psychokinetic powers mm-hmm. and can like kill people with a scream but they don't yeah they don't reveal that until quite late on like the scene where he has a tantrum and Emily Blunt who plays his mother runs away and hides in a safe mm-hmm. and I was so confused by that scene yeah me too I was like what are you doing like yeah. I wonder this kid's messed up like, did he call her mum at the end at all I uh, think at the very end he might have reconciled yeah because there's a whole thing he doesn't believe that she's his mum because mm-hmm. he had a she left him with his, her sister and he accidentally killed her. Mm-hmm. But we find out because he had one of his psychotic attacks 
when he fell off a bookcase. Mm-hmm. Whenever he's in pain, he lashes out psychokinetically and yeah. causes people to die. Yeah. Like, there's a scene where he screams and a man's head explodes. That happens in this film. Psychic toddlers, definitely on my list of phobias. <laughs> really scary. <laughs> well, yeah, you enough. can't control them. Terrible. Little terrors. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. <laughs> Just imagine you growing up in like the Incredibles universe. Isn't yeah, it? don't like this at all. Do not approve. <laughs> that kid was creepy. He was not a likable little kid at all. No, not at all. He was a good actor, I guess. But he fell into that category of child actors who act like adults and creep me out. Mm-hmm. It really creeps me out. I don't like that at all. Yeah. Like, there's a scene uh, in the middle where he's having a very frank conversation with Joseph Gordon-Levitt about my mum's not my mum. She thinks she's my mum, but uh, I have another mum, and I couldn't protect her. I wasn't old. I wasn't strong enough to protect her. Mm-hmm. It's like you're six. You literally play with a fire truck. Like, what is this? What's going on? So, um, how long you and your mom been out here on the farm? She's not. She's not what? Sarah doesn't know, but I remember my real mom. When I was a baby, I couldn't stop it. Couldn't stop what? I couldn't stop her from getting killed. I saw it. But I couldn't stop it. I wasn't strong enough. You killed her. You you literally killed her. Yeah, we you found out. You killed your thing. mother. Yes. Remember that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I don't have high hopes that that kid's gonna grow up and be a good person because that's the whole thing. Like in the reality that we live in in this film, the kid grows up to be like this evil super genius. Mm. But Joseph Gordon Levitt has faith that if he sacrifices himself and lets them Emily Blunt raise him, he might turn out okay. Yeah. Disagree. Disagree. Well, because the thing is, it it was like. Okay, so this kid goes off and becomes evil because Bruce Willis kills his mum. That's what happens. But so is that like in a previous loop? Yeah, it must be. So that means that Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis have just been sort of at each other's throats for many previous loops in the past. Mm. I shouldn't say the past. In yeah, in some timeline. Yeah, yeah. And now this is just the final one. Yeah, which doesn't make sense because. In the loop before the one that the film is set in, when Joseph Gordon Levitt gets all turned into Bruce Willis and then goes back, he gets killed instantly, doesn't he? Yes. So, when does it happen that Bruce Willis killed Emily Blunt? It doesn't matter, Harry. It, it doesn't did, matter. It didn't happen. Don't it? think about it. It didn't happen. Yeah, I found a, <laughs> found a plot hole in this film. Oh, you found the one plot hole in this town show <laughs> film. You found it. You dug it, dug, dug down. You found the one hole in this watertight plot. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it sets its own rules, and apart from that one plot hole, it, it more keeps or less its own rules. Them, yeah. So do you know what's going to happen? you done all this already? as me? I don't want to talk about time travel shit. Because if we start talking about it, then we're going to be here all day talking about it, making diagrams with straws. It doesn't matter. When I hurt myself, it changes your body. So what I do now change your memory. It doesn't matter! Also, speaking of unlikable characters, I would say that both Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Bruce Willis are not very likable protagonists. No, not at all. I mean, they're both assassins. They're assassins. Bruce Willis kills children. Did he kill the prostitute's child? He killed the first one. I think he didn't kill the second one. Did he not? I, I was, it was unclear. He definitely kills at least one innocent child. I mean, why would he not kill the second one? I can't remember that scene. Given his motivation. Wasn't there something that's... Oh, he was going to, but then when Joseph Gordon... Because there's a whole running thing which also makes not a lot of sense where he only remembers things Joseph Gordon-Levitt has done after Joseph Gordon-Levitt has done it or realised it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. He, he knows only what Joseph Gordon-Levitt knows. Yeah. So there's a scene... I think he's about to kill the prostitute's child. And then at that moment, Joseph Gordon-Levitt figures out that Emily Blunt's kid is definitely the one. Mm-hmm. So he remembers it just in time and there. I think he doesn't need to kill the second kid. Right. I think... I cool. think that's how it works. Cool. I might be cool. wrong. Yeah. And then he obviously wishes off. But but yeah, he kills an innocent child. And we see we see that. Like, we see full-on infanticide. Like, he mm. shoots the kid. Yeah, not very nice. Not a very nice character. Emily mm. Blunt's probably the only real sympathetic character in this film. Mm. Everyone else is kind of awful. But. Yeah. Well, Jeff Gordon-Levitt isn't terrible. Bruce Willis, I would say, is the villain of the film. He is kind of the villain of the film, yeah. yeah. To be fair, he's villainous, but he also has an understandable motive of his own. Yeah. Now, what do you think of this, this weird futuristic setting, that this whole world is i think they did very well on what was clearly a low budget because it looks like okay so everything stopped around sort of 20 yeah, like the, like the mid 20th yeah whatever our decade yeah. yeah everything stopped evolving in our decade yeah and now we're still living off cars that are what 30 years old or something yeah they've all got wires on the outside and different pipes and stuff making them work better yeah. which makes no sense by the way no. unless they're super powered cars which i doubt they are 
but weirdly they had these weird little milk trucks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> which Joseph Gordon Levitt sort of adopted at the end. <laughs> like I really appreciate I really um, enjoyed that bit at the end where they're just on the edge of the wheat field and the kid's been shot in the cheek or something, and then he just like lifts everything up and Bruce Willis and Emily Blunt are both flying in the air, they're about to get exploded. And then there's this, this massive shock wave of dust and stuff and Driscoll and Leather is just quietly just sort of just driving along in his little milk truck just going along the road there's, pro- there's probably a song playing yeah, they and, call him Ernie <laughs> fastest Ernie drove the fastest milk car in the west <laughs> and then it just gets knocked over and just absorbed into the yeah. storm and it's just like what is this what's going on here yeah. <laughs> and it's another kind of trope of uh, futuristic films that they often do where there's always a character who's obsessed with the 20th century mm-hmm. and again I'm kind of bored of it Yeah, I could understand why they did it with this film because obviously the budget was limited and they didn't have the budget to make a whole futuristic like Blade Runner mm-hmm. is, creates a whole universe mm. although even Blade Runner has like callbacks to the 20th century which annoyed me Yeah, the, the most recent Blade Runner 2049 but you know where there's Elvis Pres everyone like there's always, it's always about the music like mm. I've made this rant before but I wish future films would you can create anything and call it music you can just like mash some keys and say this is what people listen to. <laughs> That's really cool to me because I really liked the Return of the Jedi when there's the band in Jabba's Palace. They're mm-hmm. playing that music. I like that. I like hearing an approximation of what music might be in the future or in, or in another universe. You know what I mean? Did you like the fashion in the far, far future in this? So well, when those people come and take Bruce Willis and kill his wife, and they're wearing these massive hats. Yeah, I like that. That it was, was fine. It was, it was fine because it was it was weird and it yeah. was just like. It's fine. That's like 80 years in our future. That's the fashion then. Totally. And like Jeff Daniels, because he goes around wearing these kind of like long robe kind of thing. And he says to Joseph Gordon-Levitt, who's wearing just like a tie and a suit. And he's mm. like, why are you dressed like 40 years ago? And it, again, it's kind of breaking the fourth wall, but it's like telling the audience, okay, we know he's dressed like today, even though it's 2040. Mm. And Jeff Daniels kind of berates him. He says, you know, make your own future. You can be anything you want. You know, don't just be beholden to the past. Mm. But then... He kind of is like his character just stays dressed like that the whole time. And future Bruce Willis too. Future Joseph Gordon Levitt. Bruce Willis is just wearing like a t-shirt and jeans, maybe. Well, I think the t-shirt and jeans is never going to go out of fashion. Just like a bald head is never going to go out of fashion. True. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How can you kids stand to wear those chokers? Kravitz ties. Ridiculous. <laughs> You're aware we don't have a dress code. Fashion. You know, well, you don't know. The movies that you're dressing like are just copying other movies. Just goddamn 20th century affectations. Do something new. Put a glowing thing around your neck or use rubberized. Just be new. Okay. (laughs) Okay, should we get into some drinking games? Sure, yeah. Do you want to go first? Uh, looks like you've got four. I've got three to use. Okay, sure. So first one is drink every time you spot a piece of technology and think, wait, they're still using that. <laughs> okay, such as. Well, we mentioned the cars. Obviously, there's lots of like 20th century cars being driven around. Mm-hmm. The main one I noticed actually was when Bruce Willis infiltrates some kind of futuristic library, and it's got a kind of vaguely futuristic looking floating monitors and a weird kind of mouse mat that he puts his palm over. Fine. Mm-hmm. Then he prints out the map on a piece of paper. It's like, we barely use paper now. Like, well, uh, I get that, but maybe it was just like he he doesn't have any technology with him that he mm. can carry around or something, or... Yeah, you're right. It okay. could be a watch, it could be a... It just, <laughs> yeah. it just felt like paper, a bit of a scrap of paper with an X on it, really? Like, mm. X, literally X marks the spots. It was bizarre. I don't know why they set it in 2044. They could have set it in 2012 or something, like four years. In, like, the Joseph Gordon-Levitt bit could have been mm-hmm. a few years in the future. Like, two or three. Mm-hmm. Let's say society breaks down, everyone gets addicted to these weird eye drop drugs that they all mentioned. Mm-hmm. That doesn't have to be 40 years in the future. And then Bruce Willis is from 30 years in the future. We don't see much of that future, so it doesn't really matter. Mm-hmm. Like, So why not just have it now if you're going to have all the technology of now? It just it didn't make much sense to me. Like, it seemed like a weird choice that made a rod for their back that they didn't need. True, yeah. yeah. Small point, but I noticed it. Sure, yeah. Okay, drink for balding references. Balding references. Yes. Very good, very good, yeah. Plenty of. Mm-hmm quite triggering yeah drink every time you think oh this guy's next movie was star wars <laughs> <laughs> really yeah Aww. i don't mean as a negative i mean just it's just it's it's an interesting choice and like as i said this film is very different to stars but there are a, f- a few little moments when you can see things that he did mm-hmm. or that he also did in star wars so mm-hmm. just I-, I spent a lot of time being distracted by that sure thing yeah drink for time travel errors okay of which i just described there's only the one so yeah. it's actually only one yeah, otherwise it's water tight yeah sure <laughs> 
we've discussed this one as well, but drink every time the film anticipates a piece of criticism to almost wall breaking levels. <laughs> so it is like, it doesn't matter. Don't think about the time travel. Mm-hmm. Or, yeah. Or don't think about the fact that everyone's dressed the same as they always were. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I enjoyed that. It's yeah, good. yeah, solid. Um, drink for the loss of a body part. Ooh, that's good, yeah. Would you include the bits where scarring appears? Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, that happens more often. But that yeah. was another good joke. They're just like, uh, you know, there's somebody who works on the weekends here called Pam? Yeah, that was, <laughs> that, yes, that was my favourite joke. I enjoyed that a lot. Like, kind of, it's less letters. Yeah, because he writes, he scars into his own body like... Um, Beatrice. He's at Beatrix's, and then, yeah, you know, there were girls called Pam. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Also, why do those scars need to be so big? Yeah. And also on such a tender part of your body. Like, you nip the wrong artery there, you're dead. Yeah, yeah true. Like, just, just put it on the palm of your hand or something. Mm. Just say, coming here on the weekend or whatever, just I'll see you there. Would scarring your palm not make it harder to use your hand in general, though? Like, if you need to hold a gun or something. Like, at least this part of your arm, if you get it right. Oh, yeah, maybe. Like, but anywhere else you might not see but, like, it. Like, you'd see, like, an arrow on the back of, your, back of your hand, and then you could just do the back of your arm, at least. Yeah. But don't do, like, your inner wrist. Yeah. Don't cut that bit. True, yeah, I don't know. Where would you do it if you had to? I think back of my arm. Back of your arm? Yeah. A few or two is Yeah, yeah, yeah just, just here, yeah. Oh, I see, okay. Like, where my watch is. Yeah. Oh, I see, okay. I can okay. read that, it's fine. Sure, okay. And my, my last one is drink for clouds. I felt like there was a lot of cloud imagery in this film. What? <laughs> cloud, there's lots of scenes of clouds. I know what a cloud is. Yeah, yeah but... <laughs> it's these things. I just noticed a lot of clouds in this film. I thought you'd drink every time you see a cloud. Like... Okay, that's... Maybe, a... maybe it's just me, I don't know. I saw a lot of... Like, there's lots of scenes where he's... Stand, there's like the same shot every time he assassinates someone, right? Mm-hmm. He's in a cornfield and it's like an op- a blue sky. Yeah. And the clouds are just kind of weird shaped and prominent. I don't know. And then there's lots of like clouds in his coffee. Uh, okay. Okay. That's... I don't know. I, ju- I just picked up on it. I don't know. I was this... like, right down drinking games. It's not Toy Story. No, I was, I don't know. I was, I was looking for drinking games. I saw a cloud. <laughs> All right. <laughs> not my cool. fault. Yeah. Look, okay. Any excuse. Any excuse. In the next episode, maybe you write a list of drinking games and then just, just take one off. Take one off, yeah. Edit. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> Just do whatever you think is great, yeah. and then take one off. Do one less than great. Fine, fine. We'll, uh, yeah. Are we, are we done with drinking here, then? Yeah, we are. <laughs> Your loss. Uh. Okay, so before we get some sequels, this is the point where we want to talk a little bit about Patreon. Yes. So we're on Patreon now, and uh, that is essentially for anybody who is a big fan of the show, of mm. which I've heard this. There's a couple. Yeah, we've got many. I would like to say. Feed More my ego, certainly. More than a couple. Yeah. <laughs> but if you'd like to support the show in any way, we have a few things up on Patreon, which we have up on a, on as a pay-as-you-feel system. Mm-hmm. So you can pay anything from as little as $2 all the way up to uh, $15,000. Well, you can pay more. If I'm, I, there's no upper limit, right? No, there is 15000 That's the most anyone can... Yeah. What if someone wants to give us a million dollars? Well, I'm afraid they can't. They have to come here in person that, and give it to us. That feels like... I'm not joking. That's, that's... No, I know, but that, that feels like something we should change. No, no, no. I, I Is that Patreon's rule? That's, that's Patreon's rule. Nobody can, can give any more than $15,000 to Patreon. A month. A month. Wow. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, sorry, guys, but uh, that's, that's, well, that's the, that's the most you can give. But yeah, so for that, we have on Patreon, as a little reward for anybody who does donate to the show, we have another podcast called Beyond Beyond the Box Set, where we review cinema-released films. Yes. Um, our most recent one is uh, Red Sparrow, I think, unless we put anything out in the meantime no this will come out Red Sparrow will come out before this well yeah if, but, if you but, but, but there might be another one after Red Sparrow true true true, 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 true. we yeah. don't know yeah we're in that post Oscars really bad films getting flung into the cinema period so there's yeah. some good bad shit coming up which I'm sure we'll all enjoy reviewing yeah two made next week yeah, that could be alright that could be alright it could be alright right. yeah, yeah we'll see, see. It could, we'll it's see. touch and go it could go either way <laughs> yeah so we've got that show and we've also got a few other things every month one thing we'll do is we will give somebody a 30 second advert slot yeah well Just anyone the... who supports us will get an, a 30 oh, sorry, second yeah. slot <laughs> anybody month, who yeah. supports us so this could be for Anything that you do could be a hobby you do, like a podcast, could be your business, could just be somebody else's business, if you're feeling that generous. Yeah. And we'll give you a, a free 30-second advert slot on the show. Yes. Um, another thing that we do is uh, our Patreons, we do like to have on as guests. Mm-hmm. So once a month, we will have a Patreon episode. Yep. And there's one more thing that I've forgotten. You can be a character in one of our sequels. Ah, yeah. No one's quite taken us up on that yet, though. But if no, you want I don't to, know it's why. yours. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's a bit weird. Or maybe you could just make up a character and we'll we'll try and put him in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever you want. Look, we are whores. We will do anything you ask us for money. Well, John is on. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have a respectable job. What? Um... <laughs> You're the one who has a respectable job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, is that it? Uh, yeah, I mean, if there's anything else you would like us to add as an incentive on Patreon, do let us know because we are very much open to suggestion. Mm. We really want to make it a good value 
prospect for our fans. And as Harry said, you can pay as much or as little as you like. So even if it's just $2 a month. Whatever you think we're worth. It will be highly appreciated. It really helps us to keep the show cost neutral. We put it towards, you know, better equipment for us to make a high quality show, etc. It's just, yeah, it really does help us out. So we, we are very, very grateful. And we do, do try to produce high quality bonus content. And beyond Beyond the Box, it is a lot of fun to do so if you're not listening to it already you're missing out so yeah that's all on patreon.com slash beyond the box set yes thank you very much thank you right now on to some sequels yes you're first I'm first great so watching this film I enjoyed it a lot I will say if there was a weak link it would be that I don't think the female characters were terribly well served completely agreed I felt like Emily Blunt's the one isn't there or two well Emily Blunt's character was okay but she was definitely she kind of was just the suffering mom character. She had she had some strength. She wasn't like a complete wet blanket. But what did she do for a living? I could well. I spent the half of the film thinking she was a prostitute. So I was like, when is she going back to work? Like, <laughs> she's not going back to work for a while. And then when I realised she wasn't the prostitute, I was like, oh, I guess she's a farmer. Mm. Like, maybe she just lives off that farm. Because mm. it seems like society's oh, yeah, kind of, course, of broken but... down. So maybe yeah. she's just like self-sustaining or something. So yeah. So her character was a little bit of a generic female second banana. And then there's also Piper Parabo's character, who is just the prostitute with a heart of gold. Mm-hmm. Both of them have to share their breasts, because it's one of those films. So on the whole, I was just kind of... Did, did, she her breasts? did she get naked in that sex scene? I don't think so. Okay, maybe she did. Maybe I'm being harsh. But uh, certainly Piper Parabo did. Mm. Anyway, so the point is, I felt like this film could have been better towards its women char- female characters. So I've decided to do a sequel, a direct sequel, which is much more of a female-led action movie. Okay. So it's set about eight years later. Sid, who is the Emily Blunt's son mm-hmm. with the telekinetic powers, mm-hmm. is now a teenager. Mm-hmm. And his powers are getting stronger and stronger. Okay. Emily Blunt's character is called Sarah. And Sarah is still, you know, looking after him, raising him, trying to teach him the right way. But unfortunately, he's still just a little bastard. And he just is running around with telekinetic gangs and terrorizing the community and just causing all end of trouble. He's just not a nice person. Mm-hmm. So Sarah basically spends her entire life kind of vainly trying to cover his tracks and guide him onto the right path. And She's having to spend a lot of time hiding in that safe, basically. Yeah. Every time he throws a teenage tantrum. Like, imagine his teenage tantrums compared to his like youth tantrums. Oh, like, dear. Not good, not good. So one day, Sid and his gang... Imagine, imagine puberty. Imagine what happens at prom. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, exactly. No. Jesus. She walks in and I'm wanking and he just blows up a whole apartment. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that what happens when he finishes? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mom! <laughs> you should have locked the door. <laughs> Uh, so one day Sid and his gang are, are robbing a local community centre using their powers to steal silver from the elderly mm-hmm. suddenly a mysterious red headed woman in her mid 50s appears mm-hmm. wielding a futuristic gun that she turns on Sid now I have two potential castings for this Okay. either Julianne Moore mm-hmm. or Kate Blanchett Julianne Moore I think Julianne Moore because she's a natural redhead mm-hmm. but I feel like this is an action person I feel like Kate Blanchett's more actiony I can see her more as like a badass gun toting do you think she's done more kind of action worthy stuff she's more athletic I think has she she was in four wasn't she yeah but that's the only one I could think of I'm sure she's done oh, oh, I'll get Julia Moore let's give her a chance mm-hmm. Julia Moore she's, she's method she she's, she's, she's great fun I like Julia Moore so Julia Moore is playing this kind of gun toting red headed assassin mm-hmm. and she's going to be referred to as the red headed assassin okay so he uses his telekinetic powers to attack her much like he does in the original film towards mm-hmm. anyone who attacks him but she appears to have powers of her own and she manages to deflect his attack basically mm-hmm and in fact, Sid's gang scatters, some are killed, and he's forced to run for his life. Right. So this is obviously Emily Blunt's little son. So as he's running away, she's giving chase, and a van pulls up beside him, containing another woman in her mid-50s, who's blonde, and she's played by Jodie Foster. Okay. Another great action mm-hmm, mm-hmm. actress. And she says, classic line from another franchise, come with me if you want to live. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear it's not a full-blown Terminator rip-off I promise I just a few little references here okay. and there have you got a name for this by the way I'll, I'll come back to it yeah okay cool because firstly when I was uh, trying to think of an idea I was like okay let's just browse some different names like Lupinator Lupinator no yeah. no, that's, no let's not do this yeah I went through the same thought <laughs> process so he jumps into her van and between the two of them they evade the red-headed assassin and head back to Sarah's farm to hide out for a bit mm-hmm. so the Jodie Foster character introduces herself as a character called Alice Mm. And she says she's from the future. Okay. And she, in this future, apparently Sid did turn out to be a force for good. And he managed to use his powers to overthrow all the crime lords who were running the future. Mm-hmm. And to restore peace to the world. Okay. Okay. So, however, the red-headed assassin, who's played by Julia Moore, has been hired by the criminals to assassinate him as a kid so that he can't bring them down. And to, so to restore them to power, essentially. Got it. Yeah. So, 
I know there's a lot of balls in the air. But no, no, no I'm, I'm with it so far. Cool, okay. So then the meat of the film is going to be a Terminator meets Mad Max style kind of action adventure on the road sure. where they're kind of on the run. You've got Sarah, Emily Blunt's character. You've got Alice, Judy Foster, the future defender, and Sid, the little kid with mm-hmm. the psychic powers, who's now a teenager. And they're just on the run on the road trying to evade the red-headed assassin who's basically the Terminator figure who's just giving chase and mm-hmm. hunting them down. Yeah. Throughout this whole thing, though, Sid is just being a brat. Yeah. He's awful. He's violent. He's rude. He's ungrateful. And the only reason he stays with them is every time the red-headed assassin appears, he almost gets his ass kicked and killed. So he's basically staying with his mum and this person just for protection. Mm -hmm. But he's not showing a lot of gratitude. Anyway, the chase continues, and eventually the red-headed assassin finds them and faces down with Alice, Jodie Foster, in a final showdown. And in a fierce battle, she in fact kills Jodie Foster, Alice, Mm -hmm. who in her last breath tells Sarah and Sid to run for their lives. So they leg it back in the van, drive off down the road again, Mm -hmm. and they end up hiding out at the roadside diner from the original movie, where the assassin ends up finding them, and there's another battle ensues in which this this time Sid is forced to fight with the assassin himself again, Mm -hmm. using his telekinetic powers. And the assassin is on the verge of killing him when Sarah manages to shoot her and temporarily disarm her. So she gets shot, falls to the ground, and then Emily Blunt's character Sarah stands over her prepares to finish her off when the assassin looks into her eyes and says it doesn't have to be this way I understand how hard this is but you need to understand your son has to die he's evil and if he's allowed to grow up he's going to destroy the world and Sarah says much like in the original film she's like, I don't believe you if I can just raise him right I know he'll turn out good and the redheaded assassin she rolls her eyes and she basically picks up a gun shoots Emily Blunt's character in the little finger shoots the little finger off and she, as Sarah screams in pain the redheaded assassin raises her own hand and her own little finger disappears. Ooh. Plot twist. Nice. <laughs> Didn't see that coming, did you? So uh, <laughs> the assassin reveals that she is, in fact, Julianne Moore is Emily Blunt from the future, mm-hmm. which actually works much better casting-wise. They look quite similar. Sure. Yeah. Is there really a 30-year age, age gap in those two? I think so. Julianne Moore's like 55 and Emily Blunt's maybe 20. No, no, Emily Blunt's like 30, so maybe like 25 years. Emily Blunt's only 30. Maybe she's older. Maybe it's like 20 years. I don't know. Age up, age down. I mean, sure, whatever, I'll, I'll take it. I'll Joseph take Gordon-Levitt it. was older than he played, I think, in mm. this. I don't think there's that much of a difference to him and Bruce Willis, but I'm not sure. Anyway, the assassin reveals that she is, in fact, Sarah from the future. Mm-hmm. And it turns out, after years of attempting to protect Sid, she eventually had to come to terms with the fact that he is just an evil little bugger and he has to die. Mm-hmm. And he did actually end up rising to power, much like in the original film, and just causing chaos and killing people. He wasn't a good person at all. And it turns out that the Jodie Foster character, Alice, the blonde assassin, the blonde defender was the daughter of the Jeff Daniels character, Abe. Mm -hmm. And she was sent back in time to protect Sid and make sure he did rise to power to make sure that Sarah didn't assassinate him so that he could, you know, become this evil crime lord. Yeah. So she was actually the bad guy all along. So young Sarah, Emily Blunt, is devastated and she drops her gun to the ground. And before she can process this new information that she has and make a decision, suddenly a shard of glass flies across the room, pierces her heart, and she falls down dead. And old Sarah, Julianne Moore, screams out, no, and disappears, like mm-hmm. Bruce Willis does. And then the film ends with Sid, the uh, you know the little kid. He's the last one standing. He picks up the gun and walks out with a grin on his face as the theme music from The Exorcist plays over in the background. Because <laughs> he was an evil little brat all along. So he killed his mother? He kills his mother, because he, re- he's, he's, he overhears it all. He realises that... Okay, so... Yeah, he, he sees that, he's, that she's going to kill him. Yeah. And so he decides, I'm not going to let that happen, I'm just going to kill her instead. He embraces evil, yeah. Because he was evil all along. She but he walks out with a grin on his face. Yeah, because he's just, yeah, because he's evil. But that, my point is that he, you can't change some people, some people are just evil. All right. A yeah. bit dark, but, you know. Title? Oh, the title of that was um, Looper 2, The Kids Aren't All Right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I just thought, again, I, I thought I'd do like a Mad max kind of style action movie, and then I thought, yeah, what if the kid did just turn out to be evil? So mm. then... Obviously, the Bruce, if the Bruce Willis, Joseph Gordon-Levitt loop is closed, what if Emily Blunt in the future uses that power? So mm-hmm. well, that might be interesting. And then I thought, well, there has to be someone else. So then I brought in another character to kind of... I liked the kind of the twist kind of thing. Yeah, that, that film... Uh, you're not going to get this, but the film feel, feels quite uh, similar to the theme that uh, Logan kind of has to it. Oh, really? Yeah, in a good way. Not, not as though, like, you've copied it, of course. So. Well, I've but, not seen uh, it, so I couldn't possibly have it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that, that's good. Yeah. I like it. Good, good, glad. Um, feels like a Western. 
Yeah, it has, again, I was going for that kind of vibe, you know. I guess Mad Max has Western-ish qualities, sort mm. of, you know what I mean? Like, on the road. Sort of does Logan, that's what's making me think Yeah, exactly. I've not seen Logan, yeah. so I couldn't say. But yeah, yeah, it has that kind of, you know, runaways kind of, on the road kind of vibe, definitely, yeah. so. Yeah, you should watch Logan, you would really. I, you see, I will watch Logan, it just, I've not had time. Like, now, now the Oscars <laughs> are over, I don't have time to watch Logan, mm-hmm. so, yeah. But, uh, yeah, any other questions on that at all? No, no, that's pretty good. Cool. I like it. Now, I have high hopes for this sequel, because... Because uh, you know, it took me two, two hours, hours to two write. Two and a half hours to write yeah. it on your sofa. Okay, well, I hope I've not let you down. You could never. Challenge accepted. <laughs> <laughs> this week's not the week. <laughs> okay. okay, so this one, I'll give you the title straight away. It's called Super Loopers. Super Loopers, okay, interesting. Mm-hmm. So it's going to take place about 15 years after the events of Looper. Sure. So about 2050 something? I'm saying the year is 2060. So 2060, sure, yeah. Um, we're still a good 15 years off the invention of time travel. Okay, sure. So in the past 15 years leading up to this, TKs, which are the telekinetic people yes people with telekinetic, telekinetic yeah. powers yeah mm-hmm. tks have evolved their powers and become much more powerful okay and they've sort of evolved into some different directions okay um all based off the same the same power this has created a a new race divide in the population so all tks are now required to register their identities and abilities or else face just straight execution right okay all tks live in the slums and the uh, normal humans live in nice houses nice areas with nice jobs sure there is a lot of police brutality and not single TK is on the police force. To combat the TKs, the police have developed a short-range power dampener and violence will result in immediate execution. Guns have recently been completely outlawed. Not even the police or the mobs have any guns. Nobody has a gun? Nobody has guns. Okay, so what weapons do they use? Just hand to hand? A bat or whatever, I don't know. Wow, okay, interesting. However, in the year 2090, okay. that's 30 years ahead. After so, that, yeah. So that's, so that's going to be our future. However, in the year 2090, this has all been worked out, and TKs once again live alongside the rest of humanity in complete harmony. Okay. Unknown to the authorities, there is still a vast worldwide criminal underworld led by a single man known only as the boss. It's the future. Everything is bigger and better, even the mobs. Okay. Is this in 2090? That's 2090. So in 2060, there's no mobs and no violence. In 2090, there's a huge mob. In 2060, there's still loads of violence and a big sort of race war going on okay. between TKs and... Normal. Oh, I see. Okay. And in 2090, the public image is that that's all been sorted out. Okay. You know, everybody's living in harmony. When actually, there's a massive mob. Okay, sure. So back in 2060, we get introduced to uh, four friends who are going to be our main characters. Sure. Um, and they're all known as the Super Loopers. Super Loopers, great. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've not read this out, out loud before, so this sounds a lot more like Oompa Loompa. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking of <laughs> Super Loopers. <laughs> is there going to be any kind of crossover with the film Super Troopers? Uh, no. Oh, okay. That was my immediate thought. Yeah. But the theme tune that runs at the end of the film... Is Super Trooper from ABBA. It, 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 it's it's, it's going to be Super Looper from ABBA, but they're, they're okay. going to re-record it for this. Sure, yeah. Are ABBA still about? Are they all alive? They're still alive. They're not recorded together for about 40 years, but uh, I'm sure this is be the thing that will get them back together. Yeah, yeah, of course. They've been offered a billion pounds to tour and they said it down. Billion? Was it? Yeah. Wow. Okay. So a Super Looper is essentially a TK who is also a Looper. Sure, Okay. Just a bit tongue twisty, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> carry on, carry on. That's not going to be the most complicated part of it. Okay, part right. of this. Um, and so they are used when the future mob wants any TKs knocked off. Okay. You know, because you can't just send, like, say, if, if if they wanted Sid, the future version of Sid, to be knocked off. Yeah. They couldn't just send him back because he'd just be like, ah, blow up. Yeah. Yeah, so this consists of four people. The first one being Sid. Okay. Who has now evolved his ability to just simply, he can make things explode. Mm-hmm. Just instantly without any kind of trouble or anything. There's going to be some other characters. Uh, there's going to be someone called Sam, who can alter gravity. Okay. In what sense? They can increase or decrease gravity in a certain area. So either crush somebody with gravity or make someone float. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. Somebody else, I don't know why I've given them names. The names have really come up in this that much. Jack, who can alter seismic activity, can create earthquakes and okay. play with the ground sort of stuff. And uh, another character called Jenny, who has touch telekinesis. Which essentially means anything that she's touching, she can she can move completely. Oh, okay. So, so like she can lift heavy objects. So it's a little bit like super strength, but like say I could lift this table just by the very very corner of it, and the whole thing will come up without sort of snapping in half under its own weight. Great. Okay. Sure. Now I would like you to help me with casting for these these people. Okay. Sure. They are going to need older equivalents. Okay. Sure. So they're currently in their like twenties. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. And nobody, or Sid is from the original film, but nobody mm-hmm. else is from the original film. Correct. Okay. So, Sid, mm. so he's going to be someone in his 20s and someone in his 50s, then? Mm-hmm. What's he look like in the future? 
I, I don't know. No, is, is, is he like muscly or is he more like nerdy or is he... Probably a bit muscly, I'd say. A bit muscly, yes. Yeah. So, uh, Zac Efron? Okay, so current Zac Efron. Yeah, good. Yeah, good. It, it would fit with the theme of weird eyebrows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and who would play an old Zac Efron? Hugh Jackman. Hugh Jackman, yeah, I can see that. That might work. Yeah. Oh, and of course, it's got that whole greatest show. Yeah, that's right about it. Yeah. Okay, um, so next one is, is Sam. Okay. Who could be a man or a woman? None of this really matters, but... Uh, so what was Sam's power again? Uh, can alter gravity. Alter gravity? Let's make Sam a woman. Let's make it 50-50. Because sure. I'm guessing what, what the f- Jenny's going to Jack and one. Jenny are the next two, yeah. Cool. Well, let's say Jack's a boy. And Okay, mm. cool. So Sam can alter gravity. Let's say... Uh... Uh, we just said in our previous Red Sparrow review that Jennifer Lawrence hasn't made good choices recently. Maybe well, a, a Looper sequel would be a good choice. Okay, let's throw her in this. Who's an older Jennifer Lawrence? Julia Roberts. Because she was like America's sweetheart 30 years ago. Yeah, and I'll take it. Uh, well, 20 years ago, sorry. And Jennifer Lawrence is America's sweetheart now, so that makes mm-hmm. sense. Or, okay, now for the next one, what are your thoughts on Jaden and Will Smith? Sure, I mean, it's you, a little bit on the nose, but yeah, sure. Well, I mean, they've, they've done a few films together Exactly, already. it's a bit of a roll eyes, but yeah, why not? Go with it. Sure. Yeah. Next one, Jenny. Jenny, what was her power again? Touch telekinesis. Okay, simply because she's called Jenny, let's go with Robin Wright. Oh, it's the older version, okay. Mm-hmm. No, it was the younger, but it was the 20 year old version. <laughs> She's got range. Uh, yeah, Robin Wright and um, Emma Stone, is she too old? I mean, Emma Stone's been in the original. Hasn't oh, that's Emily Blunt. That's Sorry. Emily Blunt, yeah. Um, or Anna oh, Kendrick. Yeah, yeah, Emma, Emma Stone would do it. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, great. Cool. To recap on that. <laughs> so we have Zach Efron, older version Hugh Jackman. Yes. Who is a Sid, who has the telekinetic who can powers. Make things, who can make things explode. They've all got telekinetic powers sure. of kind. He can make things explode. Guy who can alter gravity, Sam. Mm-hmm. Or girl. So a girl, Sam. Uh, a Jennifer, girl, Lawrence. Jennifer Lawrence and Julia Roberts. Yeah. And Julia Roberts. And then Jack was being played by Jaden Smith and the older version Will Smith. Yeah. And Jenny, who is... I've already forgotten. Uh, Emma Stone and Robin Wright. Yes. Sure. Beautiful. Okay. Good. So, to start off the film... Yes, we're still at the start. Okay. <laughs> it's been a long episode, isn't it? Um, we see four concurrent scenes, so all happening at the same time, we just cut between them. Okay. They're all waiting in the chosen assassination spots. Um, Sid, for example, is just in a cornfield. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same as... Yeah. And when the people for them to kill appear, they all break into fights. Now, I, I remind you, there's no guns involved. So it's all so hand-to-hand. They're all using hand-to-hand, using their powers in different ways. Sure. So Sid, he's, he's pretty powerful. He just immediately blows that guy up and that's fine. Yes. Stop. Sam is already applying a very strong gravity field. So the person just sort of lands there and it's just like, oh my God, I'm pinned. Um, and they just get killed that way somehow. Okay. Just crushed by gravity. Yeah. yeah maybe, or maybe they can't breathe or something like that. Sure, yeah. Ugh. Yeah. Ugh, horrible. <laughs> by the way, these aren't written to be likable characters. Oh, good. Okay. Because I don't yeah. already. No. <laughs> Jack, can, he can cause earthquakes. Okay. Um, so... What he does is he just sort of throws the big, large bits of ground at this person who, using their abilities, they just sort of keep bashing them away. And uh, he just creates a hole in the ground, which they fall into, and then he seals up the hole. Oh, okay. Oh, yeesh. Yeah. And then Jenny, with her touch telekinesis, she's ready and waiting with a boulder the size of a house just held over her head, which she then just drops forwards. Sure. Simple as. I feel like that one's a bit sort of Looney Tunes. Yes. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> like it. So after this, they all go back to their base where they can cash in their rewards. They all arrive at a fairly similar time. They walk in as a troop and are well respected by the other loopers. Mm-hmm. Sort of like heroes in their field. Sure. These guys, are, they're the best of the best. Sure. They all cash in their rewards and go for a drink. So we're essentially just seeing just a normal day in the life of okay. the super loopers. Okay. <laughs> God, it sounds so ridiculous. Fun. It sounded so good in my head, but it <laughs> sounds ridiculous. Oh. Just oh, well. stick with it. Style I'm, it out. I've got to stick with it. I've written so much through this. Okay, so the next day, the um, same thing again. They're all in their places, ready to do it all over again. The people are sent through, and of course, it's their future selves. Right. But twist, none of them appear in front of the super loopers where they're expected to. They appear behind. Oh, okay. Just to sort of, so give them a little bit of an advantage. We meet the older versions of everyone. They all say to their younger selves, I've not been sent here for me to kill me. I've come here of my own accord to help me save our future. Right, okay, sure, makes sense. So, all four pairs, the middle-aged versions of them, say, okay, we're all going to Sid's house or whatever to have a bit of a... Is this all happening individually? They're not all in the same room at this point? Well, now they're all going to Sid's house and then they're all in the same room. Sure, but beforehand it was just four concurrent scenes of four characters. Okay, so 
Okay, so there's a bit of a prologue where they all meet their older selves and then they all yeah. head to one place. Okay, that makes sense. So now they're all in one place and it's easy for me to sure. okay. tell this story. Great. So the four old Super Loopers tell the four young Super Loopers about the future, about the perceived harmony and the super mob and the boss and how the boss is, he's a normal human and he's very jealous of all the TKs with their powers. So what he's doing is he's hunting down and sending them back to be assassinated. Sure. So there's a bit of a racism thing going on there. Okay. They explain that their plan is to track down the young version of the boss in present day 2060 mm -hmm. and kill him now when he's a teenager before he can climb to the top of the mob. Okay, so very similar plots to the first one. Mm. Yeah, okay. So that's what they do. The eight of them put on their detective caps and using some knowledge from detective him. Detective caps. <laughs> and using some knowledge about him from the future, they start tracking him down. Okay. Uh, they track him down for days and weeks. There's there's montages. There's maps on the wall with pins and pictures and pieces of string and <laughs> pieces of string. What? You know, like okay, connecting okay. all the pins and just like oh, well, he met that person so, then. And, oh. oh, so once again, technology hasn't really moved along very much in the interim. No. Okay, sure. A blackboard, a bit of chalk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some sticks in the dust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually, they find out who he is and where he's going to be. And they also find out that he's got bodyguards with him from the future. And also he's fully aware of time travel and the destiny that he's got to become essentially the leader of, of the world. Sure. So they all go after him. The younger Super Loopers engage in battle with his bodyguards, while the old ones try and get it, get to him as he escapes. Uh -huh. The battle is quite immense with giant earthquakes, fluctuations in gravity, meaning that some, some of the bad guys just fly up into space. <laughs> there's people exploding left right and center there's rocks flying it's this uh, feels very michael bay it, well, okay maybe michael bay comes in and directs this yeah. i don't know meanwhile the older team they managed to go and catch up with them they still got a couple of people there that they've got to fight and they get through that but uh yeah and so he gets held in a gravity trap so, so who's playing the teenage evil character doesn't really matter lucas hedges sure, sure. Has, has he got Fair a name no he's just always known as the boss the boss okay never sure. got a name so what's he doing as a teenager, though? Is he just a generic teenager? We don't see. We don't see. He's just being guarded by bodyguards the whole time. Oh, so he, people and, know and, what he's going to become. And, and fed, fed information to become okay. the leader of the mob. So, But people know, already know what he's about to become, then? He's not just yes. some an anonymous teenager? Yeah. Okay, sure. Carry on. I mean, it's not public knowledge, but it's known but, within his circle. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Yeah. He's being groomed. Yeah. Yes, Great. exactly. Cool. So, and what's his power again? He doesn't have any. He has he, no he, power. He's just human. He's jealous just of everybody a... who does have powers. Right, okay, sure. Which is why he's trying to kill everybody else. Oh, sure. Is it like a monarchy situation? Is he like in line for the throne? Or is he just, is he a power, the son of a politician? Or? No, just like his future self is the leader of the mob and he's just grooming his younger self to become an even better leader oh, of the mob. Oh, okay, sure. Through ta using time travel? Yes. Okay, right. I see. Okay. We all there? Yeah, I think I'm there. Yeah. Cool. So they've got him and he's captured in like a, uh, he's just floating in the air. He can't move. <laughs> and uh, Sid says, this is for all the people that you were going to kill <laughs> and he's just looking innocent you're just like i've not done anything yeah. stop <laughs> and the camera pans away and all we hear is him screaming uh-huh it's the four of them all kill him oh right okay it's a bit it's a bit grim yeah okay deliberately grim sure well it's like the original film they cut away they don't show us the kid getting shot they just mm. kind of pull away and we assume but mm -hmm. yeah so we then get you know i love a montage we then get a montage <laughs> of our of our four young super loopers growing into their older selves oh, okay sure you know with hair loss and whatever is there going to be a song over the montage ah, i've not thought about that it would have to be something like abba surely <laughs> <laughs> the loopers program is shut down uh-huh the class divide between the tks and normals starts to fall down and everything is seemingly getting better okay. you know as we're building towards that perfect future that i talked about at the start sure yeah so 15 years into this montage it's uh, time travel has just been invented and without the mob meddling in it it's not immediately outlawed okay it's just kind of like a public thing that you can do it essentially turns into future armor world okay sure the montage continues for a further 15 years and as we Actually, see is it in real time <laughs> <laughs> yeah this film spans 30 years right sure the, the, the duration is 30 years and one hour that's quite the runtime right go on <laughs> <laughs> yeah and through this we see our group of four carry on with their lives and arrive into this seemingly perfect world where there is no mob no crime, but suddenly it all goes wrong when a small group of supervillains reveal themselves with their own secret mob, which has been running underground for almost 30 years. And it is the old Super Loopers, okay. who are now another 30 years older. Oh, I see. So it's themselves from 30 years further into the future. Yeah, so it's, so it's the ones who initially went back to kill the boss. Yeah. Well, nobody sort of did anything with them. They were just hanging about. Sure. So they aged up another 30 years. So Will Smith, with 30 years of age, makeup on him. So now they're all, like, pensioners. Evil pensioners. 
Yeah, I guess. Because like Will Smith's like in his fifties, so he'd be like in his eighties. Uh, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Okay, mm-hmm. really expendable. So mm-hmm. I like it. Okay, go on. So not like they're just running them up. No, okay, sure. They're not necessarily the front of the line fighters. Sure, you'd, you'd think, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so with this reveal, in a swift, well-coordinated worldwide strike, they wipe out all the TKs, which in the world of 2090 is about two-thirds of the population God. of the planet. Yikes. They gain control of all major governments in the world and create a, a global empire. The only people they can't touch are their four middle-aged selves, because... If they die, they die. Same with the younger cells, presumably. Exactly. If they yes. die, they die. Yeah. yeah. So I'm not going to refer to them as the middle aged super troopers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> super loopers. Super loopers. So the middle aged super loopers know what they need to do. And it's obvious they need to go back in time again. Yeah. So they go back in time, back to the very moment that their original selves or their original middle aged selves killed the boss. Right. They do that and explain to both the young and the current middle aged super loopers <laughs> that, you know, what happened. And that they all need to be sort of monitored along right. the way just to make sure that uh, this doesn't happen again. So both sets of middle-aged super loopers decide to live with each other for the rest of their lives to keep each other in check. Right, okay. Leading to, well, that's essentially the end of the film. And it gets followed up by a sequel sitcom where each of these four actors playing two characters each, they're all living together and hilarity ensues. Wackiness ensues. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I can already hear the theme tune. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was complicated, but good. Yeah. yeah. It reminded me of like deja vu. kind of. Yeah, I was going for something like that. Yeah, I had that kind of like going back and meeting yourselves and more versions of yourselves and mm-hmm. it just constantly loops in on itself. No, I think that could work. That could work, yeah. Uh, I, might, I think I need to draw a flow diagram to kind of figure out where <laughs> everyone is at what point. <laughs> and as well. It got a bit difficult. You can it's see why like, it took me quite a while to write. Yeah, I think if you, if you could see it, it would make sense. Like, mm-hmm. It also reminded me a little bit of like Deja Vu meets like X-Men, the new class or something. Yeah. I was getting that kind of vibe of like, you know, young yeah, teens, yeah, yeah. super teens. Okay, no, that's interesting. That's good. I like it. Very good. No, I don't think I've got any questions about that. I think that worked pretty well. So. Brilliant. Cool. Well, that was uh, Super Loopers. Great. Well, awful name. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, listener submissions? Go on then. Cool, yeah. So we have some good ones this week. Diarmid, how do you pronounce that name? Diarmid. It's like an Irish name, isn't it? D-I-A-M-U-I-D. Diarmid, sorry, I'm going to say Diarmid. I apologize if it's wrong. Diarmid O'Brien said Hyperlooper. We've got some just titles alone at first. Sure, sure. Uh, Matt Hanley said Tupa, number two, O-O-P-E-R. Yeah. Perfect, perfect. I'm so happy with that. Thank you. More complicated, no, this is a Finnish name. Uh, Yuha Haik 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 I'm sorry, again, apologies if I've mangled that. This is great fun. Yuhaki Akila, uh, similar to you, classic Nordic movie, Looper 2 Super Trooper, the Looper Abba movie we've been waiting for. So I guess you've already done that, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. I guess this is explicitly like if Abba had time travel abilities, mm. which I'd like to dig into. <laughs> That'd be a great fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Travis Green, what happens to the psychic kid if he grows up as, with an example of self-sacrifice and with Emily Blunt to raise him instead of her dying? So I guess that's what happens at the end of the original film. Uh, I could see a good movie in that universe about a heroic psychic wrestling with his own darkness and fighting him with time-travelling criminals. So, yeah. yeah. That's a legitimate sequel idea. That could really work. Mm. Like, if the kid was good, was the hero of the next movie. Mm-hmm. Like it. Like it a lot. Mike Carey's, his is called Looper, question mark. It's just three people in a small room sitting at a table discussing what would have to happen for a guy like Joseph Gordon-Levitt to end up looking like Bruce Willis. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Isaiah Hand says, uh, Luke de Looper. A film about a time-travelling figure skater. <laughs> yeah, good. Yeah. Gabriel Hunayosa said Electric Booga Looper. <laughs> and Ono Lit Class at Ono Lit Class Pod said Looper 2 Electric Looper Loo. So that was popular. <laughs> good. Ollie Brady said Looper 2 Loopholes. It's a Talking Head style documentary in which Ryan Johnson tries to explain all the timey-wimey nonsense in this film. <laughs> good luck. Kayla Smith said Whooper, which is the same film but with Pokemon. This is a Pokemon called Wo- a Whooper, apparently. Okay, sure. False Starts at False Starts Pod. This is more of a plot. Same premise, different cast. The star is now Jean-Claude Van Damme, the action star. Okay. In the future future, the government has decriminalised time travel, so it's mm-hmm. legal. But it's heavily regulated, expensive and highly taxed. The only people really using it are the government themselves and criminals. So Jean-Claude Van Damme is going to spend most of the movie hopping through time dealing with these criminals, these time travelling criminals. The title, Time Cop. Nice. Technically already exists. <laughs> he says, uh, I wrote that in jest, but how cool would a good cop, bad cop interrogation scene be? They can't do anything to the criminal in the interrogation room, but they can go back and start dismembering his past self. So. <laughs> that could be fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very Jean-Claude Van Damme. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bloke Busters, at Bloke Busters. Looper 2, back in the loop. 
Mm-hmm. Nice, uh, nice. Sid grows up and decides to go back in time to kill old Joe before the climax of the previous film, leading to a happier ending for his mother. However, he goes too far and has to wait several decades. He spends that time growing a gang, building a group of people to help him in his quest, although he doesn't explain who he is, just that he wants someone dead. Uh, he moves into Kansas City and adopts the name Abe, then he waits. He spends some of the time attempting to change little things he knows about, but fails. By the time young Joe arrives, he's resigned to his fate, meets him for the first time, gives a knowing smile, credits. So I think that means that he goes back in time, gets stuck, and grows up to be Jeff Daniels' character. Mm-hmm. So, interesting. Mm. Interesting twist. That would give Jeff Daniels' character something to do. So. Yeah, it would. Yeah, I like that. Uh, yeah, that was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Jack and the Geek Stalk. Blooper. A biopic <laughs> telling the story of Joseph Gordon-Levitt being the body double for the majority of Hollywood's A-listers. He never gets his big break, but he's the unsung hero of the industry. I mean, you get a, you get a brownie point for just the title alone. Blooper's good, yeah. <laughs> and Geeky Brummy, at Geeky Brummy, their idea is Flooper. Mm-hmm. Superstar DJ Joseph Gordon-Levitt is pursued by time agents after stealing music from the future to make with his copy of Fruity Loop Studio. Nice. So, yeah. That's good. That's mm-hmm. a good idea. Go into the future to steal music and then become like a superstar DJ like with his futuristic beats. That's interesting. Mm. And finally, some psychopath called Ross Burton has given us a whole load of title ideas, which I'll read out now. To clarify, Ross Burton uh, does another podcast with me. He's not just uh, he's not he's not just a psychopath. He is a psychopath, but he has other qualities. I said not just a not psychopath. Not just a psychopath, yeah. So <laughs> his ideas are in order. Back in the looper. Yeah. Out of the looper. Hula looper. Hot loop, Starship Loopers, Looper Duper, Looper Man, Looper Girl, Bradley Looper, Loop Permit Parking Only Before 6pm. <laughs> At this point, I feel like he starts to go off the rails a little bit. Uh, Looped is as Looped does. Two loops of vanilla ice cream with sprinkles. And finally, Emily Blunt Force Trauma. See, that last <laughs> one's really good, but it doesn't, <laughs> doesn't necessarily relate to this film, apart from Emily Blunt being in it, but yeah. I like it. Good stuff. Good, good pun work, Ross. Thank you for your contrib- contributions there. Ross, I'm a little disappointed that you didn't do Looper. I barely know her. Oh, God, please don't encourage more of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So if you have a sequel idea for Looper or any films we've done in the past, please let us know. We are Beyond the Box Set. You can find us at beyondtheboxset.com. Our podcast is also available on iTunes, Stitcher, Acast, Spotify, all good podcasting platforms. Or you can contact us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, anywhere else. Just search Beyond the Box Set. You'll probably find us. You can also support us on Patreon by going to patreon.com forward slash beyond the box set for as little as $2 a month. And you can also get our merch on tpublic.com. Just search Beyond the Box Set. Is that everything? Yep, that's, that's, cool. that's it all. So next week, it's another two-hander. We get another week to ourselves. Yay. And it's uh, one of my picks. So, for this episode, you chose a film that you said you've been waiting a long time for us to do. Mm-hmm. You're so, now going to pick a film that you've not been waiting at all to do. No, it's no. Not, it's not Red Sparrow, is it? It's not Red Sparrow. No, oh, no, thank no. God. Oh, God. As if I'm going to watch that twice <laughs> in that short amount of time. I'm going to give it at least five years before we revisit that one. Uh, no, no, no. I, I thought I'd also do a film that I've been kind of wanting us to do for a while. And a film that I don't think you've seen. I know... Last time I mentioned it, you hadn't seen it, so maybe you still haven't seen it. I think it'll be a film you like. I think it'll be a fun one. So I have decided that next week we are going to do a film called Galaxy Quest. I've not seen it. You still not I've watched still it? Still not seen it. Okay, cool. So I'm I'm quietly confident. Sure. Uh, you might hate it, but I think you'll like it. So yeah, join us next week where we'll be pitching sequels to Galaxy Quest. Okay, we'll see how this goes. Yep. See you then. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye. Bye.